Hey everyone, we're on board the SS Rotterdam. It's our 13th wedding anniversary, so we decided what better way to celebrate than aboard a ship. That's not going anywhere. But join us for the next two nights as we check out this ship turned hotel. Let's go. The SS Rotterdam originally set sail in 1959 as an ocean liner for the Holland America Line. In 1968, the ship got a retrofit and became a full-time cruising vessel. In 1997, she was sold to Premier Cruise Line and sailed as the SS Rembrandt until Premier Cruises went out of business in 2000. After lying unused in the Bahamas for three years, she was purchased by Rotterdam Dry Dock Company with the goal to bring her back to Rotterdam and serve as a hotel. In 2004, work was done to remove the asbestos, repaint the hull, and restore the ship, as well as restoring her original name. In 2008, she opened as a combination hotel and museum. In 2010, Westcord purchased the ship and continues to operate it as a hotel, permanently docked on the Maashaven in Rotterdam. For our anniversary, we spent two nights aboard the ship in an executive room. To reach the ship, we took the train down from Amsterdam. The ship is easily accessible through public transportation. When we arrived, we took the gangway into the main lobby area, and as we stepped inside, it felt like we also took a step back in time. As we arrived a bit early, our room wasn't ready, so we decided to check out the Captain's Lounge, one of several bars and restaurants on board this ship. You don't need to be a hotel guest to visit this delightfully retro bar filled with art and artifacts from the ship's history. Eventually, we were able to check in and were escorted to our cabin at the very front of the boat deck. We were a bit surprised that we needed to navigate down a hallway of office spaces and conference rooms, though, because it was the weekend, we never saw anyone in those spaces. Now, let's have a look at our cabin. All right, this is suite executive room number 5002 on the SS Rotterdam. As we enter the room, we have some windows that are forward facing. Gives a nice view of Rotterdam off in the distance and a view of the front decks. This room is on the boat deck, which is uh, deck seven, I believe. Come into the room, we have some furniture. This furniture is actually from the ship in the 1950s. Uh, we were escorted here by a gentleman who told us about the room a bit. So this furniture wasn't necessarily part of this room, but it was on the ship. The chairs, the table, this wooden hutch. The mattress, however, is more modern. They said it's about two years old. And the TV, obviously, is not from the 50s. <laughs> uh, we also have a cabinet here, a small closet. Inside the closet we have on one side ironing board iron. We have some robes and some slippers. On the other side, hair dryer, safe that will fit a laptop, and a mini bar. And because this is an executive room, I believe the mini bar is included in your stay. There's some Pepsi, some Heineken, a bit of wine and some water and a few snacks in there. We 
Moving on, I have a, a modern flat screen TV here. Uh, this is really cool. A little, what do you call this? Like a little station here with some drawers. Nice mirror. Um, it's all wonderfully retro. I love it very much. And then in the bathroom, we have some lovely vintage blue tile flooring. And a shower stall. And this all looks to have been modernized at some point. Um, definitely, this is an all vintage. Well, that cabinet, the, the sink cabinet looks like it might be vintage. It's hard to tell. Yeah, so... Uh, hmm. Let's see here, I didn't notice there's any amenities. Oh yeah, okay, we do have amenities in here. So there is some body lotion, shampoo, and conditioner, and some shower gel, some soap bars, and some glasses. There's a telephone. It's like a little stool of some sorts. Yeah, so this is the room. It's uh, it's it's a nice room. It's, it, I love how they kept it like still pretty vintage. It's got a lot of the old style to it. Um, the furniture's obviously been reupholstered and refinished and whatnot. But yeah, no, it's very nice shape. These curtains, I might steal these curtains and bring them home. I love them so much. But yeah, so this is our room for the next couple nights. Very excited to try it out. We didn't make any dinner reservations on board for the first night. So we left the ship and walked about 20 minutes over to Phoenix Food Factory. This market contains stalls serving food, craft beer, wine, and other goods. Our favorite was the Capsa Brewery. We are here at the Phoenix Food Factory, um, which has a lot of different stalls. But we came because we saw that there was a brewery inside. Um, it's the Capsa Brewery. Um, so Tori has a maple pecan pie stout. It smells good. I'll let her try it. And then I have a West Coast IPA. Nice and hoppy. Roast. The next morning, we headed down to the Lido Grill for their breakfast buffet. Lido Grill is one of the two restaurants on the promenade deck. This tasty and well-stocked buffet costs 21 euros per person per night. In addition to this spread, there's also a coffee bar with two machines that make various coffee drinks. The restaurant is decorated with old photos from the ship, as well as antiques like this stack of old TVs and radios. Just outside of the Lido Grill is a lobby and the entrance to the club room, the ship's more upscale restaurant. After breakfast, we set out on our top to bottom tour of the ship. The ship has two separate tours you can book. We started with the steam and chrome tour, where you explore the lower decks with a guided group. You pick a time where you'll meet up with your guide at the ship's indoor pool on sea deck. It's a shame they didn't restore this area and make it usable. It would have been a very cool experience to swim in this pool.
so this is the indoor swimming pool and it was used mainly by women to escape the male gaze on the upstairs uh, outside pool. Very interesting. We were the only English speakers on this tour, so the guide spoke mostly in Dutch. Fortunately for us, we understood a good amount of what he was sharing. But it's something to keep in mind if you decide to book the tour. One of the most interesting areas was the back of the ship. Here we found the main speed controls. The bridge would signal the desired speed to the engineers who would then adjust the ship to those settings. And further back, this room houses the shafts that drive the ship's propellers. Finally, at the end of the tour, you are escorted into a small exhibition with mock crew quarters as well as several photos and artifacts from the ship. Next, we head upstairs for a mostly self-guided tour of the upper decks. They give you an audio device that plays a recording in several languages when you hold the device next to different points on the wall throughout the ship. There are also a few volunteers that would show you around some of the clubs and ballrooms providing more information. Some of these guides even worked on the ship previously when it was sailing around the world. It was fun to hear their stories. Mexico, <laughs> wow. South America, everywhere. All on the cruise? Or just no, no, traveling? sailing with, the, uh, with the, uh, the factories. Yeah. And then with this, I go Rotterdam, New York, Rotterdam, New York, Rotterdam, New York. And then the, 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 the cruise around the world in wow. 1961. It's flat, the uh, very uh, expensive wood. Oh. Wow. And you can dance in here. Yeah. And you may not <coughs> speak loud here. Everything you have, you say something. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Say something. You talk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> Echo. Wow. It's the uh, fishing, the other boat. Mm -hmm. It is a boat. Oh. And birds. Mm -hmm. Similar to the Queen Lounge, there was a. Yeah, yeah, the second class. Yeah. Second class. Okay, so this was first class. Second class. <laughs> yeah. For the panties. Oh. For the, oh, the so niche. For the niche. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do people rent these spaces now? Mm -hmm. Do people rent these spaces? Yeah, everything you can rent. Oh, okay. These spaces are available to be rented for events. While we were there, the Queen's Lounge closed in the afternoon to host a ticketed jazz event. And another group was using the theater, so we were unable to enter that space. In 1959, they made this picture. Photo, photo, is wow. it? Yeah. And it's still the same, eh? I love this so much. Eyes, eyes are looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> following you yes. as you dream of it. <laughs> Perhaps the most fascinating space was the Grand Ballroom. The impressive mural that spans the interior wall is called the Aegean Sea by the artist Kuno von der Stein.
Bring it, bring it. Nope, because he's walking over here, so nope. Thank goodness these lifeboats are no longer needed as they have fallen into a bit of disrepair. Part of the tour allows you to explore the ship's bridges and offices. It was particularly interesting seeing the older instruments juxtaposed with the newer technology used by the ship in its later cruising years. There is also a room set up with more exhibits and artifacts from the ship's history. Tori tried to ask the gentleman for more information, but he didn't seem to want to respond. Hold on, Meneer. Meneer? Hello, Meneer. The quarters for the captain and the officers have also been restored. You can view them, but are not allowed to enter the rooms. Outside, we found the first class sports deck. It was here that then Princess Beatrix played shuffleboard on the Rotterdam's maiden voyage. So of course we couldn't help ourselves. As an ocean liner, the Rotterdam was a two-class ship. There were sliding panels that separated the stairway into a first and second class side. And the beautiful glass artwork allowed the light to shine between the two sides. After the retrofit to become a cruise ship, it became a single class vessel. Since it was our wedding anniversary, we booked a nice dinner back in the Lido Grill. When you visit for dinner, the restaurant has a much different feel than the breakfast buffet. We really enjoyed our meal and recommend you make a reservation if you stay on the ship or are in the area. All right, well that does it for our anniversary stay on the SS Rotterdam. I think we had a pretty good time here. Uh, we just finished our anniversary dinner downstairs at the Lido Grill. It was quite good. Mm -hmm. um, overall, what did you think of the experience? It was interesting being on a ship and not actually going anywhere, um, but it was kind of like a step back in time because this ship was built in 1959 and even though it had a couple of refurbs and, and time in dry dock, it still has very 1950s feel. Um, so that was like really cool. Doing the tour was awesome. I will say bring snacks. It ended up being like three hours, which is not what I expected. Um, but you got to go into all of the areas of the ship, which was really cool to see the bars and the, where the different classes of people could go when it was a first class, second class kind of ship. Um, so yeah, the tour was really good. Dinner was delicious. There was a nice captain's lounge where we could have some drinks and some snacks. So overall, it was an experience. Is it a must see? Probably not, but hey, if you're in Rotterdam, why not? Yeah, I think if you're a cruise ship aficionado or if you just, if you just like ships and history and stuff, it's a cool thing to do, a cool experience. It wasn't super expensive to stay here, I think. Well, we're in the exec executive room, and that was like 200 euros a night. Which for the Netherlands in a big city is not that expensive, honestly. No, but they are calling it a four-star hotel, which we're not totally sure where they're getting the four-star from, but still, 
they did modernize the bed and stuff, so that's comfortable. Yeah, the room's quite comfortable. Um, yeah, so I, I think if you're if you like kind of quirky experiences, or if you're just a ship person and you want to see cool ships, history, um, definitely a cool thing to do. If you're not going to stay here, definitely do the tour. We had a lot of fun there. Yeah. But yeah, um, so that's a recommendation. If if you're into that stuff, cool, check it out. Uh, if not, then maybe skip it. But yeah, otherwise, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and check Tori's bag that she doesn't try to steal these curtains behind us because she's been eyeing them since we got here. So yeah. let me just go check that bag before we go. <laughs> they are awesome curtains. All right, we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye.